Hi, I'm Sam Tribble with Strength Project, and today we're here in San Diego, California with Judy Nolan, and she's a handstand circus artist, and she's here to help us out with a few questions that we might have on learning better handstands. So, Judy, your handstands are amazing, and a lot of people have questions out there about doing handstands, but before mm -hmm. we get into some of that, can you tell me a little bit about your circus training and your handstand training? Yeah, so I started probably about a decade ago. I started before that in gymnastics and then found the San Diego Circus Center and I've always trained handstands and hand to hand until the past couple years. And now my main discipline is just handstands mixed with some acro and a little dance too. So the question I have, of all these different things that you do with dance and acro, acrobatics, mm -hmm. and you said you're in gymnastics, to just focus on this one discipline, how, how did you become so passionate about the handstand? Why the handstand? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think one thing I really love about handstands is that you can do it anywhere. You don't need much to um, train. It's a really good also um, foundation for everything else you do in circus to build strength and body awareness. Um, and yeah, it just lays a great foundation for whatever else you need to do. You just need planet Earth. You just need planet and, Earth, and that's all. Air. Um, oh, there, but yeah. I was just thinking about this too because we were just playing around and doing some handstands and stuff and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm like winded. I haven't done handstands <laughs> in a while. Um, so, and you don't think of handstands as like an aerobic activity or anything, but really breath work and just controlling that is a whole nother aspect of handstands I don't think people think about too much. Can you tell me a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah, I think um, it's something that I have had to work on through my whole training and something that a lot of my coaches have helped me learn um, and using exercises of like using short breaths instead of trying to take deep breaths because I've found that that does not work um, and I think honestly talking in handstands and trying to have a conversation is a great talking practice. Talking in your handstands yeah. is a good practice to Yeah do that. or like counting to ten I remember one of my old coaches would have us um, like do the whole alphabet when we were doing handstands. Um, How old was this coach? Is he as old as me? No, I'm just kidding. Mm, I mean, no, go on. What did he, he had you do? Handstands and count to ten. Yeah, count to ten, or you know, sing the whole alphabet. Um, and sing I think, it or just say it. <laughs> guess it depends on the person. I mean, I like to sing it, but <laughs> oh, I'd like to kind of hear that. <laughs> what would you suggest for someone that's just learning handstands and maybe they can only kick to a handstand against the wall? I mean, is it too early mm -hmm. to think about breath training and and that type of thing? Or um, I think. The breath training is always something you should keep in mind because, I mean, you need it for everything you're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And even for practicing handstands on the wall, it's great to keep that in mind. And um, yeah, I think on the wall is a great place to start. It helps build strength, which is, I think, the first thing that people struggle with. Um, and also, it just takes a lot of time to like get comfortable upside down for some people that have never really spent time <laughs> upside down. So. So your suggestion would be maybe to kick to a handstand, let's say if you can hold it for 20 or 30 seconds, but mm -hmm. even through that 20 or 30 seconds, maybe count to 10 uh, or say as much of the alphabet as you can. Yeah. Um, and then when you're saying the alphabet, are you thinking about just speaking normally? Are you rushing through? <laughs> Does it even matter how you do it? But just getting the, the, the voice and the breath out is what's the most important thing about I counting? Think, or... I think it is kind of just getting the breath out and I remember my one coach in France, he um, described the breathing as when you're like running late for class and you have to run there and then you get to class and you don't want to like be panting so you try to hide it and just like... Oh. So like you're not, you know, to not show that you're out of breath. Yeah, that's a good physical visual. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as far as for a beginner just learning handstands, what do you think a good place just to start with? Like for specific exercises? Um, I think that too, but let's just say um, I just walked up and saw you on the street and I said, oh my gosh, that's really cool. I always wanted to be able to do a handstand, but I've never even worked up. Like I have no gymnastics. What do I do? Where should I start? What can you tell me? How do I get there? I think it starts with, especially like training your wrists and mobility um, and doing like, you know, exercises to strengthen them. Cause can you show us a few? Yeah. Just in like on fours, lifting your wrists down, and there are a lot of pro 
progressions for this, I think. Like Are you, you putting also... a lot of weight on your wrist right now? Is this exactly how you would be doing it? Um, I would say you're trying not to keep all the weight in your wrist. You don't want to have all your weight in your heels, but you want it to be. And when you say heels, what do you mean by heels? The, um, the heel of your mm -hmm. so palm, this part? I guess. Yeah. And so you want to try to keep it like where your knuckles or your, yeah, mm -hmm. right there. Um, and another one for this is like coming up to this position mm -hmm. and keeping your um, fingers a little bent so they're not locking out, but that's a good one and can shift the weight depending on how much, um, how difficult it is for you. So let me back up a little bit. I'm gonna place my hands on the ground and I noticed you said, when I said, where do I start with, you know, I wanna learn handstands. And you really went to the awareness of the feeling of the ground and where my weight is, just, mm -hmm. just putting my hands on the ground. And so I think that's something that, I mean, even in gymnastics learning, my coach has never told me like, in handstands, think about the weight that's being um, displaced through your hands and where you're pushing it. it was, we just worked mm -hmm. handstands, worked handstands. Like this type right. of information is, I mean, it's crucial really because this mm -hmm. is your foundation right here, your base. Yeah. So you're saying, um, feel the weight distributed evenly throughout my um, uh, heel, and then um, I don't know. Metacarpal, you know? Metacarpal. Right? Something like that. And then all the way through to your fingertips should be evenly dispersed. Is that? I would say pretty evenly. I think I tend to keep my weight a little more so in my fingers, and I don't want to say the wrong thing, but metacarpals maybe. Because um, I think something that happens to a lot of people is you're like falling into your wrists, and it makes this whole part of your hand come up. Um, like this way, the, the Yeah, this back. way, back. Uh -huh. um, and I think another thing to keep in mind is like using your fingers, it's a lot of what kind of where all of your balance comes from. Mm -hmm. You don't want to like get them too scrunched up or have them completely flat. I think just trying to find a nice in between with them, your fingers. So I feel like you're saying it's almost as though I'm <laughs> trying to grip this table and pick it up or something. Completely, yeah. You're trying to grip the ground as much as you can. And it's amazing that when I do this, I, I feel really connected mm -hmm. to, yeah. Yeah, I think, because that's where you get all of your hands To stabilize from. it, yeah. Yeah, you're to not, compensate. You exactly. have to be able to push. Mm -hmm. So then, um, let's say I, I understand this and um, I'm getting a feel for this. Moving up my body, what am I, what am I thinking about next? Um, I would say elbows are kind of the next thing you hit. Some people, like me, have, um, I forget what these like called, hyper -extended. but... Yeah, hyper-extended. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's something you have to like learn to deal with, and I've heard different things about what you should do to compensate. Some people say micro-bend, but I think that can, that can be difficult when you get up to like higher skills and It's stuff. a long time to be not locked exactly. out. Exactly, <laughs> and it also like messes up your balance, so... Um, but yeah, definitely keeping your elbows straight. And after that, I guess it's shoulders, which... And when you say straight, um, straight um, and I would say like rolled rolling, in. Yeah, rolling and I, in. I think and, it comes from like pushing yeah. up. And when we say roll in, um, it's kind of confusing because when we do this and roll in, it rolls actually in so far it's facing almost out. Yeah. But it's, but it's almost like rolling the elbows in mm -hmm. inwards. Yeah, I think once mm -hmm. they start to roll out, that's also when you can kind of fall that's, into your that's, heels. Mm -hmm. So I'm really thinking about gripping the ground, distributing the weight evenly across my fingertips and really rolling my uh, elbows in. Yeah, for sure. Great. That's a great place to start. So once I feel that, then what? Am I ready to kick to a handstand against You're the ready. wall? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can just go for it. Well, that sounds awesome.